Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the birth of our Lord. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we come together to celebrate this Christmas Day, our God who comes to live amongst us, and not just live amongst us, but as one of us. I want to offer this Christmas Mass for our whole community, all of you who gather to celebrate week in and week out with us wherever you are. For you and for your families, today we offer this Mass. We come before the Lord, knowing that our God who loves us and who comes to be one with us also wants to strengthen us when we experience our own weakness and fragility. Let's pause, bringing our lives, especially our weakness and fragility, before the Lord. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, earth, peace to people of goodwill. We We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature, and still more wonderfully restored it. Grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings, who publishes peace, who brings good tidings of good, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has barred his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. All All the the ends ends of the the earth have have seen seen the salvation of our God. O sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. All the ends of the earth 
have seen the salvation of our God. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, break forth into joyous song, and sing out your praise. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing psalms to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, raise a shout before the King, the Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In many and various ways, God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the ages. He reflects the glory of God and bears the very stamp of his nature, upholding the universe by his word of power. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has obtained is more excellent than theirs. For to what angel did God ever say, you are my son? Today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A hallowed day has shone upon us. Come, O nations, and adore the Lord, for today a great light has come down to earth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every person was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of people, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father. John bore witness to him and cried, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, for he was before me. And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He 
has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. In his spiritual exercises, St. Ignatius, at one point, asks the person doing those spiritual exercises to imagine hearing or overhearing a conversation between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, is looking down upon the world. And Ignatius writes this. He says, Looking upon our world, men and women being born and being laid to rest, some getting married and others getting divorced, the old and the young, the rich and the poor, the happy and the sad, so many people aimless, despairing, hateful and killing, so many undernourished, sick and dying, so many struggling with life and blind to any meaning. With God, I can hear people laughing and crying, some shouting and some screaming, some praying and others cursing. And he goes on to suggest that once we have done this, once we have looked at the scene, we listen to what the Trinity says. And he says, the conversation goes like this between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us work for the redemption of the whole human race. Let us respond to the groaning of all creation. Let us respond by sending the Son, Jesus, to live among them and begin the work of redemption. In John's Gospel, which we read on this Christmas day, he tells us exactly that, that God comes in Jesus to live amongst us. We might ask, why would God's Word, Jesus, living in the serenity of the Trinity, want to enter this world so marked by so much suffering, so much corruption? so much malice, so much evil, and death which feels so dark? And the answer is given to us every time we gather together and pray the creed, for us and for our salvation. That is exactly why God chooses to do this. You see, love is the meaning of it all. What we celebrate today is much more important than the words that Jesus spoke, that the words we hear Jesus speaking. What we celebrate today is the action, not the words, the action of a God who chooses to come and live amongst us. And as the English adage goes, actions speak louder than words. He came in love to be with us, sharing our human nature, our limitations, our pains, and our sorrows. The word, as we say in the creed, becomes incarnate, God with us. And since the days of his flesh, he continues to be with us, whatever our circumstances. Notice how John's Gospel tells us he pitched his tent among us. He pitched his tent in our midst. Or simply, he lives among us, abides with us. You know, over the centuries, images of Christmas have multiplied from the narratives of the synoptic gospels. We've created cribs with angels and shepherds and magi and all sorts of things. We've got Christmas trees and Christmas carols. We have Christmas shopping, God help us, and Christmas dinners. These are all okay, but their multiplication 
can create a focus that steers us away from what God intends when we celebrate this Feast of Christmas. It can almost, in a way, create an upheaval and push us into thinking about Christmas in a way that is not in the mind of God. Because at the heart of what it is to celebrate Christmas is to celebrate the incarnation of God's unconditional love in our midst. God's unconditional love in our midst. And it seems to me on this Christmas Day, John asks us to step back and reflect on the very heart of Christmas. Before we go off to celebrate or to give gifts or to look at cribs, but to step back and celebrate, uh, focus on the very heart of Christmas. The Word became flesh and lived among us. And just a few verses on, John tells us why. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only son. You might think today that the biggest challenge is the dinner that you have to prepare for Christmas lunch or the tricky family situations you have to negotiate. And very often we have to do things like, oh, we can't put uncle so-and-so next to auntie so-and-so because they're going to fight. They don't like each other. And so we are doing all these kinds of negotiations. And John says to us, that's not it. The biggest challenge, John says, for us today is to step back for a few minutes and realize that the heart of Christmas is about a God who becomes one of us. How do we do that? Notice, notice that John says, of his fullness we have all received. This means that all Jesus was and Jesus is, we too can be through God's grace. A transformation is constantly being enacted in us if we are open to God, if we are being drawn into that sphere for which the word descended into the very heart of God. Jesus called himself the good shepherd, the one who not only looks for the lost sheep, but also carries it home on his shoulders. He descended, he became incarnate today so that we could ascend. He came not only to live amongst us, but also to help us to share in the very life of God. And that's what we are called to do. How will we do that? By sharing in the life of God and the love of God, we offer that to others, the fullness of life and love. I wonder if you can put aside the fancy dinner today and rather really share life and love with those you are with, without having to have things to do that. Because that, it seems to me, is what John is calling us to do. Perhaps the second invitation is, how do we become as Jesus is? Forget New Year's resolutions. Answer this question for yourself today. This God who comes to live amongst us, who becomes exactly as you are, how will you become more like him in 2023? We're invited simply to live in the same way as he did. We are invited to live in the very heart of God as Jesus did. God places immense trust in us as he did in Jesus, and therefore he gives us responsibility. And that's the challenge for us, is to take on that responsibility and to live it as best we can. 
the final word about Christmas at its deepest is love. The unconditional love that God has for each of us, made present and tangible and radiant in the person of Jesus Christ. A love that he gives freely. How today are you tangibly radiant, showing to others the person of Christ in freedom? If we do that, then indeed we've begun to understand what this day means for humanity. Let's pray together now the Apostles' Creed. And we are asked on this Christmas day when we get to the words, born of the Virgin Mary, to kneel. If you can kneel wherever you are, that's fine. Or otherwise, we simply just pause and bow our heads. And so we pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our God comes to live among us. Our God listens to us. And so we... Thank God for that gift of listening to us as we bring our prayers before him. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, speak and let your people celebrate your birth with a new commitment. Let us proclaim your glory so that all may be filled with praise and thanksgiving. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, mighty God, we pray for your wisdom and guidance for the leaders of all nations, that there may be peace, justice, and righteousness for all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, everlasting Father, speak to us and let your love surround us this Christmas. Help us to see you in others and that others may see you in us as we continue to love and serve you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, wonderful counselor, speak words of comfort, love, and compassion to all that are lonely, sick, and grieving. May they find peace and reassurance, knowing that you are the light in their darkness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I'd like to pray this morning for all of you, wherever you are, our community that joins us. Pray especially for our benefactors and those that enable us to continue this work. Pray for those who in any way assist us, that on this Christmas, the Prince of Peace would bless you and your families with a gift of peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus who comes to live among us. We thank you that he shows us the way to you. And we pray that these prayers we have made today 
would help us on that journey, on that path to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, we ask you to receive the water, the sacrifice of our faith, our more contrite hearts, wash away our iniquities, cleanse us from all our sin. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Make acceptable, O Lord, our offering on the solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind so that, as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in the love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts who have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving 
this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together now in the very words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let's offer one another on this Christmas day a sign of God's peace. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian St. Thomas Aquinas defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, 
We invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Grant to a merciful God that just as the Savior of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us, so may he be the giver even of immortality who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So before the final blessing, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you all and your loved ones a very happy and holy Christmas. But I'd also like to, on this day, thank the many people who support us in this ministry. Um, for a number of years now, for these celebrations, Monica Garzola does flowers for us, so we say thank you to, to Monica. Thank you to all of you who send us emails and messages and support. And I'd also like to thank the team here at the Jesuit Institute for weekly ensuring that uh, this Mass is broadcast. So I wish you all the best today, and I'm very grateful for all that you do for us. The Lord be with you. With your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of His Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy day, Drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God who will that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.